we How did were you able meet to... her? She stalked me, man. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky she, boy. <laughs> a, she she stalked me because I I, I did a, a a profile on a magazine of sorts. I think it was a y, YFM magazine at that time. And she saw it and she was reading it. And she was based down in the Eastern Cape um, at Grahamstown. Uh, while at school. So she saw this picture and she's like, oh, this guy is quite nice. And it so happened that her roommate actually knew one of my best friends as well. And he's like, oh, I know this guy. This guy is guru. We can introduce you. And they got my number. And then she sent me an SMS to say that she's an alien and uh, I'm enjoying this and I'm finding it exciting because I'm smiling. And I was like, why? And she captured me with that SMS. You know? And for seven months, we started chatting by SMS which SMS at that time was still a bit costly, but needless to say, I did a lot of, lad, can I please get some pocket <laughs> money? But we SMS for seven months, and eventually we met up uh, for our very first date. And Can you remember the moment you saw her? I had not seen her. I remember seven months of ch chatting to someone who, I don't know what she looked like. At that time, we didn't have smartphones, so we couldn't exactly SMS a picture. So I went to Four Ways, as we were meeting, at about 1.30. So I'm... I'm waiting at a restaurant and I'm overlooking the parking lot and I needed to go down to the car and drop off my bag. So as I'm waiting, I look across and this beautiful girl that's coming this way, she looks like an old lady. I think there was an old guy next to her and they were walking two towards her. And I admired her. I was like, wow, she's gorgeous. <laughs> anyway, I wonder, you know, I hope my person is coming and she's also equally gorgeous. So I go to the car, drop off my bag, then my phone rings. So I pick up, hello, it's like, hey, it's me. I'm waiting here at the entrance. So when I look back up at the entrance, the very same girl I was admiring coming this way <laughs> was her. And I was just doing all of these moments <laughs> like, yes. And we hit it off from our very first date, so much so that uh, two months later, three months later, I actually went to, to Grahamstown to a matric dance. Good heavens. And uh, okay. we did the matric dance thing. And today I'm, I'm glad to say that we, you know, 14 years later, we are married. We've had our first year of marriage. And uh, we've Wait, got jump, uh, don't jump over it. I want to hear yeah. about the proposal. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, look, we've been dating for so long, 14 years, um, and we got a wonderful opportunity to basically do the Absa Cape Epic. And we That's a race and a half. Right? That's a, it's the toughest mountain bike race in, in the world. I mean, it's a tour de France of mountain biking. And uh, you race against professionals as well, as well as, as, you know, amateurs. And only 600 teams enter. And you have to be in a you team. You have to be in a team. Two. So now with myself and my dearest uh, girlfriend at the time, we were not experienced at, at this form of racing, and we'd never done such a long stage race. How long so is it? So it's, it was 735 Ks. So what we did is we basically partnered up with people who were experienced. Mm -hmm. So I got a friend of mine who was also you know, a, a good mountain biker, and she as well got a guy by the name of Ernest Villon, but very good, and he was going to look after her. And we, we did this race, and uh, of, of the seven days of the race, um, I think on the third or fourth day, there was a time where I was riding, because we had started ahead of the circle, and myself and my partner were about a good hour. We thought we were about an hour. The next thing, there was a part where everyone in the group was pushing, pushing their bikes, going up this climb, and then I heard baby, and when I turned around, it was my dearest girlfriend. <laughs> And she was riding, and she rode past us. And, <laughs> for the, you know, for three days, she kept on beating us by an hour or so. But on the last day, I had to actually ask her partner, like, listen, I've got a bit of something that I want to do, and I need you to finish behind me, because if you finish ahead of me, it doesn't work. She's like, what do you mean? I'm like, look, I've got the ring, and I showed him the ring. And he was so excited that he then was able to control the tzikhu's pace going into the last day and actually slow her down a little bit. So I managed to finish the epic uh, before her, and while we were waiting, they were tracking her, and you could see where she was on the on, on the course. And with about 100 meters before the last corner onto the finish line, I got down on my knees, <laughs> and I waited for it to come through. And it was a very special moment because we also had our folks. We got our folks to come through and actually, you know, experience this wonderful moment. And uh, it was just a bliss because I, I told them, I'm sorry I took you through the epic. I was not testing you or anything, but I, now that you've done it, congratulations. Can you come through and join me in my epic life? And, uh, and did she say yes? She said yes. <laughs> she said yes, and, uh, you know, life just got better. And it's, it's been an amazing experience. It's only a year and a bit. We've been married, and um, I'm, I'm, I'm super excited to even inform you right now that we've got a little package, a little 
Zulu princess on the way. An adventure baby. <laughs>